UFC 295 goes down this Saturday, November 11th, from Madison Square Garden. And although it was originally supposed to be headlined by John Jones versus Stipe Miocic for the UFC Heavyweight Championship, Jones unfortunately tore something in his shoulder and had to withdraw. And we are now having Yuri Prohaska versus Alex Pereira for the light heavyweight championship as the new headliner, along with Sergei Pavlovich versus Tom Aspinall for the interim heavyweight championship while Jones recovers. All details aside, there were three total fight cancellations on this card, and the day of this video being recorded is Thursday, November 9th, two days before UFC 295. So we're going to preview all of the fights and break them down in terms of a stylistic matchup. First fight on the card is Dennis Bazukia versus Jamal Emers. Bazukia is coming off of a hard-fought debut, even though he came up short in the decision against Sean Woodson. He showed a lot of promise, and he hung tough in some tough spots. And Jamal Emers is a tough puzzle to solve in terms of his style. He presented problems to Jack Jenkins. I wouldn't bet on this fight, but stylistically, I feel like Bazookia has the technical ability to figure out the unconventional style of Jamal Emers and find an opening. So I will be favoring Dennis Bazookia in the UFC 295 opener. Joshua Van versus Kevin Borjas. This fight actually has a little bit of a narrative to it, interestingly enough. Kevin Borjas earned his contract for the UFC on this past season's Dana White's Contender Series in a hard three-round scrap. And Joshua Van actually took a short-notice fight in his UFC debut against Jogos Jumagulov this past summer and came out on the winning side of a decision. And these two were originally supposed to fight before they were signed to the UFC. And considering both guys' success up to this point, the UFC capitalized on that matchup and made it happen again. I think I mentioned this in a TikTok that I made or something like that. But interesting stylistic matchup. I would favor Borjas. He's more of a dog. He has clean striking. He's willing to engage in the pocket. Haven't seen a lot of his grappling. I'm sure he's more than capable of scrambling and creating scrambles and keeping safe from submission threats. But Joshua Van will be a tough outing. I think Kevin Boros will be, win a decision. Wouldn't bet on this fight either, but if you do, Kevin Boros by decision. Kyung Ho Kong versus John Castaneda. Kyung Ho Kong has been in the UFC for like 10 years. Granted, he had a stint where he had to do military service for South Korea. So he had like a four-year span of inactivity, but he has so much experience and he's had sneaky win streaks in his UFC career. John Castaneda has been a learning on the job type of fighter. And I think he is bringing a wealth of experience into this fight that will benefit him compared to Kyung Ho Kong, who is a little bit older. And that's not something that will benefit him against somebody as explosive as Castaneda. So, I wouldn't bet on this fight either, but if I did, I'd favor John Castaneda by a finish in over a round and a half. Jared Gordon versus Marco Madsen. So, stylistically, I think Marco Madsen will wrestle Jared Gordon to a decision. Both guys have similar previous opponents. Jared Gordon has been submitted by Grant Dawson, as has Madsen. And I believe Madsen is also coming off the first loss of his career, which was to Grant Dawson. So I feel like Marco Madsen's going to stick to what he knows and try and grapple. It's on Jared Gordon to stuff the takedowns, keep the fight standing, and make it a tough outing similarly to what he did to Patty Pimblett. Nazim Sadikov versus Vyacheslav Borshov. Slava Claus versus Naz. 
both guys are excellent strikers. Borshov is more of a kickboxer, and Sadikov has shown a lot more ability to mix it up overall in the fight, in the heat of the moment. He's been in a lot of high pace, high output dog fights, which I think is going to favor him in this matchup. It's going to be on him to not get caught by something slick because Slava Claus is a very slick striker. If Nazim Sadikov can mix it up the way he did in his previous outings, he will come out with the victory. I wouldn't bet on this fight either, but if I did, I'd probably favor Sadikov. Mataush Rombetsky versus Roosevelt Roberts. So, another fight narrative. Rombetsky was originally supposed to fight Nurio Aliyev, who had to withdraw with some sort of injury to his leg. And Roosevelt Roberts stepped in on short notice after a previous stint in the UFC and then appearing on this past season's Ultimate Fighter and coming up short in the semifinals to Austin Hubbard. And this fight just formulated not too long ago, but Rombetsky is an absolute wrecking ball of a lightweight prospect with a lot of power and just fearlessness in his style. And this would be a fight that I'd bet on, and I would take that Rombetsky in under a round and a half. It's going to be on Roosevelt Roberts to avoid all those big shots early, try and wear out Rombetsky, and avoid the takedown because Mateo Rombetsky is simply looking to just steamroll his way through you. That's his style. There's no better way of explaining it. Tabitha Ricci versus Lupi Godinez. This is an interesting matchup. Both women are in the top 15. And they've passed all those prerequisite tests, so to speak. I would favor Tabitha Ricci by submission in this fight. She's an underdog, which is a bit of an eyebrow raiser if you like to bet. But Tabitha showed a lot of improvements on the feet in her fight against Jessica Penne at UFC 285, which I had the privilege of being in attendance for, and she locked in a submission after hurting her. And Lupi Godinez is also just gradually improving with every fight that she accumulates in the UFC. She has so much experience up to this point in the UFC, and she, similarly to John Castaneda, is that learning-on-the-job type of case, which is benefiting her greatly. But I would favor Tabitha Ricci and keep an eye on that underdog bet. Steve Urseg versus Alessandro Costa. Another fight narrative. I know, I'm yapping a bit more than usual. Anyway, Steve Urseg made his debut against David Dvorak, who was ranked number 10 at the time on short notice and gave Dvorak an absolute war of a fight where he hurt Dvorak, Dvorak hurt him, but Urseg just showed more threats and put Dvorak in more dangerous spots, which gave him the win and gave him the ranking after winning his debut. Now, he was originally supposed to fight Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell got injured. We get Alessandro Costa, who is no easy task. He's a teammate of Diego Lopez, and they are also a teammate of Alexa Grasso. So they have a ton of momentum in their gym right now, which I think is going to favor them. But Steve Urseg showed that he is a dog. So I would favor Steve Urseg in this fight. I wouldn't bet on this fight given the narrative, but I'd take Steve Urseg by decision. Diego Lopez versus Pat Sabatini. Interestingly enough, Diego Lopez is an underdog despite having that incredible debut against Mofzari Evloyev, who is a top 10 featherweight, and following that up with an even more impressive finish against Gavin Tucker. Pat Sabatini has a lot of UFC experience. He's a tough outing. He's fought a lot of tough featherweights outside the rankings, but the fact that Diego Lopez is an underdog is a bet worth taking, in my opinion. 
I would take Diego Lopez by submission in under a round and a half. If you're betting. Styles make fights and Lopez has shown a natural aggression with his style that benefits him greatly. Matt Frivola versus Benoit Saint-Denis. This could be fight of the night. It should be. Frivola's coming off an excellent knockout of Drew Dober on the same card that Diego Lopez made his debut on. And Benoit Saint-Denis is coming off of a finish in his home country of France. Saint-Denis showed otherworldly toughness in his UFC debut against Elizio Zaleski dos Santos and weathered the storm, which was two fights worth of damage, two and a half fights worth of damage even. Stylistically, I think Frivola has the edge. He's a lot more capable of mixing it up and keeping the pace frantic, always keeping his opponent guessing, and also just being a very dangerous striker. Not to say that Benoit Saint-Denis isn't. His fight with Thiago Moises showed that he has dangerous striking, but Frivola is ranked for a reason, and it's going to be on Benoit Saint-Denis to take that ranking from him. So, like I said, this will probably be fight of the night. Jessica Andrade versus Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern is coming off an otherworldly performance in her fight against Angela Hill. She showed insane aggression for five straight rounds, nonstop, malicious intent, going for a finish continuously, and it was impressive. And this is her fight that will put her in title contention talks. Similarly to the Yan Zhao Nan versus Jessica Andrade fight that happened at UFC 288. Jessica Andrade has become the opponent that you fight at either flyweight or strawweight that basically puts you in title conversation. So I will favor Mackenzie Dern. I'm not sure what the odds are. They're not appearing. If you're betting, I would bet Mackenzie Dern by submission in under a round and a half. Co-main event, Tom Aspinall versus Sergey Pavlovich, the short notice interim heavyweight championship fight. Pavlovich was originally the backup for Jones versus Stipe, so he has had the benefit of a full training camp, and more time to prepare for a fight than Tom Aspinall, who is coming off a first-round finish against Marcin Tabora in his first fight back since tearing his ACL a year ago versus Curtis Blades. But you can't count out somebody like Tom Aspinall, who has shown in a short amount of time in the octagon just a lot of different problems to worry about. Outside of striking... We saw in Sergei Pavlovich's fight against Alistair Overeem that Alistair was able to take him down after weathering the early storm and ground and pound him to a TKO. Tom Aspinall has very good grappling, and unless Sergei Pavlovich just nonstop onslaughts him with his barrage of punches and forward pressure, I feel like Tom Aspinall could find an early submission if he is able to weather that early Pavlovich storm. I wouldn't bet on this fight. I'm not sure what the odds are. But if I were to bet, I'd go with Tom Aspinall in under two and a half rounds. I think stylistically, he's very composed in a firefight. He's able to keep his posture and just stay tight defensively and counter Pavlovich. Because when Pavlovich is coming forward with his barrages, he usually squares up his stance and leaves himself open for counters. He's just throwing at such a high frequency that it is hard to find that counter. Interesting matchup in the co-main event, but now we're on to the new main event, a very highly anticipated fight for the light heavyweight championship, in my opinion at least, Alex Pereira versus Yuri Prohaska. Pereira is coming off a decision win against Jan Blahovich, who was a former champion in his own right at UFC 291. And Yuri Prohaska is returning after a shoulder injury that took him out of his first title defense after beating Glover Teixeira. So his return fight 
is a title fight, rightfully so, and it's against a rightful opponent. Stylistically, who could ask for a more intriguing matchup? Both guys are dynamic strikers, explosive strikers, fearless fighters, and Yuri Prohaska has shown competence in the grappling, which I think will favor him if the fight goes there, but based off the way these guys fight, there's a possibility that this fight may not hit the ground before it ends. And they have Pereira as a favorite, which I think is safe. But anybody that takes Yuri as a betting underdog right now, even though the odds are tight, is not crazy to me. The odds are too tight for this fight to be worth betting on regardless. But stylistically, I think Pereira could catch Yuri on the in-betweens considering his kickboxing background. Incredible matchup, incredible fight for the main event, despite the original main event falling out. But let me know who you guys think is going to win the co-main and main event, considering those were the two biggest switch-ups on this UFC card. But this has been Casual Roundhouse Fight Talk, UFC 295 Preview. I'm Michael Trochet, saying see you in the next one, and thanks for watching.